Hello everyone and welcome. Today I am going to show you exactly how I resin my rocks. I have been using art resin for three years now, so not only am I going to show you how I resin my rocks, I am going to give you loads of tips and tricks I have learned all along the way. So let's get right to it. Let's get a couple of things together. You need a dedicated measuring spoon. That's one you're not going to use on anything else. A popsicle stick, a paper cup, a paper napkin, and some art resin. All right, let's put these supplies aside for just a moment and let's talk about safety. Now I'm no expert on resin, so I'm going to go straight to Art Resin's website to get my safety information. It looks like Art Resin considers this product non-hazardous and non-toxic when used as directed. However, they do recommend some common sense safety precautions, like wearing gloves to protect your hands and working in a well-ventilated area, wearing a respirator if you have poor ventilation. I say no matter what ventilation you have, it's better safe than sorry. I wear a respirator every time. Do your own research. Find what safety gear you think is best. I use nitrile gloves to protect my hands. I use this respirator that I'll link below to protect my lungs. And I also wear safety glasses, you know, just in case. Sometimes when you're stirring, little bubbles might just get in the air. Better safe than sorry, guys, because you're totally worth a few extra steps. All right, now that we have a good understanding of safety, let's get into making these rocks shiny and gorgeous. I'm so excited. Let me show you how I do this. The first thing I'm gonna do is prepare a place to put my rocks to dry. I use an old repurposed piece of styrofoam. Y'all, I think I got this one out of my television packaging. I'm going to stick toothpicks in it. I'll use three toothpicks for each rock. So each set of three will hold a rock. So this is going to be just perfect for the three rocks I want to resin today. I'm going to pull out the three rocks I want to resin and make sure they sit on the toothpicks as level as I can get them. If you're not using perfectly flat rocks like these are, the toothpicks will go in and out of that styrofoam. So the side you want to show off, the side with your picture or your mandala, you want to make it as level as you can. And that's why I choose to use the toothpicks and the styrofoam. It gives me a little more control over leveling it. An art resin is a self-leveling resin. So whatever way these rocks are leaning, that's the way it's going to run. So you want them good and level. After you have your stones good and level, remove them from the toothpicks. The first tip of the day is something I didn't know when I started and I just recently learned from a subscriber. If you coat your toothpicks in just a little bit of petroleum jelly, Vaseline, it will keep the resin from sticking to your toothpicks. I promise you that is such a wonderful tip. So many times they have stuck and you have to fix the back. Since I started using this little trick, I haven't had to repair one back to one rock. It is totally worth it. Let me show you how I do this. I just turn the container over and press it to the toothpicks. Let me do it so that you can see what I'm talking about. It's so simple. Just one dip is all you need. You're good to go. Okay, now that we have a landing pad for our resin rocks, let's put all this to the side and get ready to make our rocks gorgeous. Be careful not to put those rocks back on the toothpicks until after they're resined. You don't want any of that petroleum jelly to get on your stone because the resin won't stick to it. All right, let's move along to mixing the resin. I've removed both the lids to the hardener and the resin. I'm gonna start with the resin and I'm gonna pour one teaspoon into my measuring spoon. I'm gonna make it as level as I can. I'll place the bottle of resin to the side and put the lid on it. That way I know I've already used it and I cannot mess up and accidentally grab it again. I promise you it can happen. Move it away, move it far away. All that's left now to add will be the hardener. But right now I'm gonna use my popsicle stick and I'm gonna get every bit of this resin out of this measuring spoon. 
Now I'm going to use one teaspoon of hardener the exact same way that I did the resin. You can use any measurement you like as long as it's 50% resin and 50% hardener. They've got to be equal parts. Now I'll set that aside and use my napkin to clean out my measuring spoon. Y'all, I've been using the same set of measuring spoons all three years, and that's all I do to clean up. I'll use the same napkin to wipe off any drips and spills on my bottle and tighten the lids up just a little bit. Remember, you gotta open them again. Okay, now we're gonna set a three minute timer and we are gonna stir, stir, stir. Hey Google, set a three minute timer. Okay, three minutes, starting now. Google stop and this is what it looks like after stirring it for three minutes now it's time to add it to the stone I'm gonna check each one of my rocks to be sure that nothing is on them dust pet hairs my hair anything make sure they're good and clean before you start I'm gonna wipe my popsicle stick off on my gloved hand and I'm gonna get started. I'll dip out a generous amount of the resin mixture with my hand. Then I'll gently massage it onto my rock. I wanna be sure it gets in all of the little grooves from the glitter or any imperfections of the stone, all the little dents everywhere. You really want to wash this stone with the resin. I turn it over, I get a little bit more, and I do the same thing, making sure I get every little nook and cranny, every pore, anything you can think of. You wanna put enough on here that it gives it a good bit of protection and glow, but not so much that it drips. This looks good to me, so I'm gonna set it over on the toothpicks and let it dry. I'm going to pick up my next stone and do the same exact thing. All right, now that that's done, I gotta get the gloves off me, and then we're gonna get out our torch and get rid of some bubbles. Let me see if I can show you the bubbles I'm talking about. Check out all of these tiny bubbles for mixing the resin and hardener together. They're all over the stones, but you can get an artist's torch. It's a butane torch, and you can go over the stones with it, and they'll come right off. Check out this close-up view. See them just disappear? It is awesome. Art Resin has a video on exactly how to do this. I'll link it below. This is simply how I do it and the torch I use. You need to do your research and get what you feel is safest for you and best for the project. All that's left is to wait. You're going to have to wait at least one day to touch them. It's best if you wait at least three days before touching them and let that resin really do its job. It's not going to be very effective if it's got fingerprints all in it. While we wait for these to dry, I want to show you some tricks and tips and things I've learned over the years of using art resin. I'm hoping to save you a whole lot of trouble here. Check this out. You might remember about three years ago, I made my first resin video. Unfortunately, I didn't sell this paw print and that's what I resined in the video. I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show you what an indoor rock looks like three years after it's been resin. It holds up beautifully like the day it was made. I love it. The finish that Art Resin leaves holds up so good indoors that I confidently recommend Art Resin for indoor use. And that's fine. But what about outdoor use? Well, a lot of you ask me that, so I did a test rock. So I made a rock with all the colors I could think of, and I set it outside on the railing of my deck in the full Arkansas sun. I watched the little rock 
every day that winter and I was so proud of how it held up through the frost and the ice and the snow and the below freezing temperatures. It didn't seem to bother it at all. That was until summer. Art resin was no match for the full sun and the full heat and the full humidity of an Arkansas summer. For this reason, I don't recommend it for outdoor use. So I began looking around the internet for any kind of hacks or tips or products that I could use to protect my artwork outdoors. I went to Art Resin's website where they clearly stated that this product should not be exposed to high temperatures or direct sunlight for any length of time. I wish I would have read that first. All this new information did was make me wonder, hmm, can I put it in indirect sunlight? So. I placed a couple of rocks outdoors, just around the gardens, under trees, places they would hit the sun and places they wouldn't. This is the results. Let me clean these rocks up. I literally just went outside and got them and let's see what they look like today. Well, it looks like I got the same results. Y'all, I just do not recommend art resin for outdoor use. Now, if you've ever used art resin and you've gotten this result, People are likely going to tell you that you didn't mix the resin and hardener 50-50. And that's true. You will get a result similar to this. It might be sticky to the touch or hard to the touch. And it can totally mean that you mixed it wrong. But I found a couple of more reasons this might happen. So if this is happening to you and you know that you're mixing it correctly, see if these reasons don't apply to you. The first time this happened to me was during this video that I made back last year. I had noticed right away that the finish on the front was pretty good, but maybe splotchy. But when I turned it over to the back, it was just like the rock I showed you a moment ago. Now since then, I have resin this twice, and that seemed to have fixed it. I was boggled at what caused this, until I realized I used a new product. This was the first time that I had used DecoArt's chalky finish. Now before I blamed it, I did a quick test where I painted a rock with it and added resin, and yep, you guessed it, this was the rock. So I no longer use that on my rock art. So if you're having that problem a lot, maybe check the paint you're using and do a test. Perhaps it's that simple. It just doesn't want to adhere to whatever paint you're using. For me, it was this chalky finish. So now I only use it on my canvas art. Now, there's another reason that you might get that troubled finish that I ran into. Art Resin recommends that you keep the temperature between 75 degrees and 85 degrees Fahrenheit when you're using the resin. It also says that your humidity needs to be below 50% and no more than 80%. Well, you guys can just guess I had that problem. I now keep a little note and a thermostat right beside where I resin. So now if the numbers don't match, I don't resin and I haven't had that problem again. Thank goodness. My next tip has everything to do with dust. Y'all, many of you guys ask why I never sold this rock. And the reason is right after I applied the resin to it, I thought it'd be a great idea to vacuum around the art desk. Well, that put loads of dust into it and it is just too gnarly to sell. So while your resin is curing, keep it protected. Put a clear plastic container over the top, a tent, something carefully to prevent this from happening. Oh, what a disappointment this one was. And I'll never forget these tutorials where I used the red and white paint together. As soon as I added the art resin, the red began to bleed into the white. So depending on the brand of paint you use, you might want to consider adding a quick layer of Mod Podge to it first. That's going to keep it from running with the resin. I only use this when I'm using a certain red and a certain white. So know your paints and make sure this isn't going to happen to you. I also learned that if I get any resin on me, I use these wet wipes to get it off and then I wash with soap and water. My last trick for you is try to coat a black rock with the resin. It makes a wonderful practice rock. I can't tell you the amount of times I've tried dotting on this rock. I simply wipe it off every time and try it again. And if the paint dries, don't worry, you can still scratch it off. 
All right, y'all, if you have any helpful tips or tricks or hacks that might help us out with resining our rocks, I want you to put them down in the comments so we can all share your experience too. Now, let's see those rocks that we resined earlier. Aren't these gorgeous? Let's take a closer look at each one. See how it just lifted right off of those toothpicks, leaving minimal damage on the back? I want to thank the subscriber that sent me that hack. It is the best tip I have gotten in forever. I will forever use it. Thank you so much. I want to thank you all for joining me for this video. I look forward to all of your comments. You know I read them all. Don't forget to dot that like button and hit subscribe and do all those YouTube-y things that help my channel grow. Now, if you're curious how I made these rocks or how I painted these mandalas, I have got loads of tutorials, hundreds of them over on my channel. Come check them out and watch them all. Until next time, rock on.